Welcome to Good News Week and the big news, the Prime Minister has hit on a brilliant re-election strategy. When your numbers are plummeting, your opposition is rising and your policies are killing people, just say sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's great because it can work again and again and again, every election, assuming it works the first time. <laughs> Interest rates, sorry. <laughs> Broken promises. Sorry. <laughs> Peter Garrett, sorry. <laughs> All public statements by the government will now include the tag written and apologised for by Kevin Rudd on behalf of the Australian Labor Party. Sorry. <laughs> He's particularly sorry for making Garrett a front bencher, then taking away all his responsibilities. All Peter has left are the arts and old natural resources that need protecting. They've made him minister for himself. <laughs> oh, no, that's horrible. Oh. According to a new study, human beings are at their happiest when they hit the age of 74. <laughs> at 74, we have fewer worries. And the worries we do have, we can't remember. Uh, for the study, 21,000 men and women were regularly asked how happy they were with their lives. The more they were asked, the less happy they became. <laughs> they replied on a scale of one to seven, uh, with one meaning they were not satisfied at all, and seven indicating they were puzzled by why there wasn't a ten. <laughs> Still, a majority of the 74-year-olds did say they were happy. Of course they were. Someone was talking to them. <laughs> oh, oh. Here we are, darling. Yeah. Love the old, love you. In France, a company has set up a telephone hotline where Catholics, who are too busy to go to Mass, can pay to leave their confessions. <laughs> oh. It costs 51 cents a minute, but it's worth it to avoid having actual contact with a priest. The service is called uh, the Line of the Lord. <laughs> the Line of the Lord. I thought the Line of the Lord was, it's okay, Mary, I really am God. Joseph will never know. <laughs> line of the Lord. You'll hear hymns like, Glory be to God, on hold. <laughs> Online Christian soldiers. <laughs> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord be with you shortly. When you call, a soothing male voice says, for advice on confessing, press one. To confess, press two. To listen to some confessions, press three. <laughs> and for some suggestions, press 666. <laughs> if our dreams come true, Barack Obama will be here in two weeks, and one town in particular is trying to get him to visit. Australia's self-proclaimed marijuana capital, Nimbin. <laughs> An area known for illegal cash crops, full of bearded social dropouts. Barack Obama may be closer to finding Osama than he thinks. <laughs> Nimbin Laden. The proposed itinerary for the President includes a visit to the Nimbin Candle Factory, the Nimbin 7-Eleven, the Nimbin Candle Factory, and the Nimbin 7-Eleven. <laughs> He'll also witness a display of decorative armpit hair braiding <laughs> by the Nimbin Women's Collective. <laughs> then he'll be offered the Cone of Silence. A powerful blend that leaves you speechless. <laughs> can we get the President of the United States stones? Yes, we can! <laughs> and that's the good news. It's good news, please.
Thank you. Good evening. Tonight, putting on a great show for the crowd, the Tillicum of Good News Week, Mikey Robbins. It's been a while. Coming to next month's Sydney Comedy Festival with Jackie Loeb sings the worst songs ever written, stand-up <laughs> musician, actor, writer, busy girl, Jackie Loeb. And heading to the Melbourne International Comedy Festival with his latest and greatest show, Binge Thinking, the noble savage, Peter Berno. Oh. And they're taking aim at the graceful swan, Claire Hooper. Oh. Coming to the Melbourne Town Hall with Crazy from the Heat, fine comedy chap, best-selling author and proud owner of a caravan, the British Bulldog, <laughs> Jeff Green. And winner of Best Australian Act at last year's Comedy Festival, returning this year with her new show, Flying Solos, the divine Celia Pacuola. Uh, Paulie, but before we get started, I think I'm as bemused as, as most of the audience. What, what, what was it you called me? A, a Tillicum. Tillicum. Th now that sounds like a New Zealand phone company. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mikey, I'm going I'm to give him five points to start there. <laughs> You are on fire! Hey, hey. Yeah. Choice, bro, I've been cut off by Tilikum. Um, <laughs> so, honestly, what, what, what is a Tilikum? Tilikum's the, the name of the killer whale. Oh, that, fun, uh... yeah, it's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, here's the thing about that, that killer whale, right? Yeah, it's killed before. It's, it's killed before. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I put it to you. If I have a 20... I don't think they say, oh, well, yeah, it was 15 years ago and it was 10 years before that. If I kill three people over 35 years, what am I? Serial killer! <laughs> Can I, can I also, if you're going to stick the word killer in front of anything, you get what you deserve, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's not like it's called the fluffy whale. It's not like I could go kill a whale and then under would have another sign that just said, no, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to see that trick where it's just balancing corpses on its nose. And... Actually, actually, mind you, the best trick it does is getting seaweed to cover the body. <laughs> It's, it's, a, it's a bit like in America, they've got Hurricane Alley. Who lives in a place called Hurricane Alley? Yeah. <laughs> you know, in Britain, we've got Gusty Lane. Um, <laughs> I went down Gusty Lane, my hat blew off, I was terrified. Actually, that's bizarre, because that used to be my drag name. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is all going very well, isn't it? Peter, how are you? You've just um, had an art exhibition, I, I believe. Have, I look, I have. It's uh, still going. Got one more week, rush out. Um, <laughs> No, it's going really, really well. Sold some pieces, very good response. And now I've got to go back to a real job and, and do some stand-up. Are you going to Melbourne Comedy Festival? I'm going to Melbourne. I'm going to do the Mondays, only the Mondays, which are traditionally when the shows aren't on. Aren't on. So my, I've realised my audience are the confused and, <laughs> and misinformed. So hopefully hundreds of people roaming aimlessly through Melbourne will come and sit down. Needing, needing some enjoyment and some fun. Or at least somewhere to sit down out of the, you know, the, they won't get stabbed. <laughs> I can't actually promise that, by the way. You'll get all the people that hate Desperate Housewives. The what? Or this show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks for mentioning that, Jack. <laughs> what have you been up to? I'm writing a fantastic show called Jackie Loeb Sings the Worst Songs Ever Written and just by sheer coincidence, the songs that I have chosen actually feature prominently on the new National School Curriculum, which is great, the music course. In fact, I've got Julia Gillard opening my show for me. She's going to say, good evening and welcome. Today, <laughs> today I'm here to talk about the National School Curriculum in terms of everyday working Australian families <laughs> and everyday working Australian families and not forgetting everyday working Australian families. No. No. There is no silver bullet. The buck stops here. Work choice, education revolution, the Australian Labor Party, we are going back to basics. We are sounding out words. M or r on spells. No spells. Barnaby Joyce. Say hello. I'm going to give you five points for that, Jack. <laughs> I, I, I was just thinking, because we actually had the Prime Minister on the show a couple of weeks ago, so we obviously have a, a contact number. Could you phone up in the Julia Gillard voice and say, what are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> so something, something like, oh yeah, I, I, I'm Kevin Rudd. Hello? What are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all getting a bit creepy. Let's go over here. 
Celia, how are you? Love to have you on. I'm good. I, uh, I'm, I'm doing a, I'm doing a new show for a festival. Flying solos. Yes, it, it's, it's about doing things on your own, like performing solos and music solos and that kind of thing. And for it, I am learning how to play the 22 second piano solo from the Pointers Sisters song "I'm So Excited," <laughs> which no one appears to be. And uh, <laughs> hey. Um, but I, and, and nothing else, I can't play the piano at all, and I, I'm getting pretty good. I'm pretty much across the, most of the piano buttons on there. I'm good, I like <laughs> that one. And I've got a friend teaching me, and he says if I keep calling them buttons, he's going to kill me. So... <laughs> yeah, good. Uh, Jeff? Yes. <laughs> Melbourne, you're Melbourning. You're Adelaide, Adelaide, Adelaide at the moment? I was Adelaide, yeah. How was Adelaide? Adelaide was great. It was great because there wasn't a heat wave. Because last time I was there, it was 40 yeah. degrees for 15 days. 15 days. They called it pom killing weather. <laughs> <laughs> and had a 40 kilometre hour wind attached to it. You put your head out your hotel room, your contact lenses were spot welded to the back of your eyes. <laughs> and there's all these signs that were saying, wear appropriate clothing. You know, we're during the heat wave. You go, oh, thanks, because I was going to go shopping in my fucking gimp suit. <laughs> Can we leave a bit of the swearing to the end of the oh, show so okay. we get... Okay. I mean, I love it. You know, I'm, I'm a great swearer myself, but I was just thinking, just, me, uh, just for the kiddiewinks out there, because they normally stay up till about nine o'clock if they're okay. four or five yeah. now. But leave it's all right, because <laughs> when Jeff said that word, he spelt it with a PH, so oh. it's OK. It's all right. <laughs> Are we going to have Julia Gillard with us all night? <laughs> oh, <good mate>. <laughs> <laughs> You made a bit of an observation, Claire, I must say, about the teams. With Sydney v Melbourne, um, all three on this... I mean, you know, this, this man here has defected from his home country <laughs> to Melbourne. I, I married an Australian woman. Someone accused me of social climbing. <laughs> I, I dispute that. <laughs> yes. Yay, that makes me really excited. Do you get that? Like, when we go, yeah, we got one! Yeah, yeah we trapped him! Sound, yeah. Yeah. We tricked him into Steve! I'm, I'm here to increase the gene pool. Hey, <laughs> Can I just point out that getting an English person to stay here isn't that hard? <laughs> <laughs> See, it's getting one of you on a plane that's difficult. <laughs> but the good thing is we stopped you for Denny Minogue, so we've come out of here. <laughs> The game is afoot, ladies and gentlemen. The, ga the game is afoot? The game is afoot. Oh, uh, right. Sydney v Melbourne uh, in the big arena tonight. Are you ready for it? Yeah. We begin the battle with what's the story? Mikey, Jackie, Peter, be nice. Okay. Someone from Mossman? No, no. 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 They're, they're the West Tigers who are, uh, who are one of the clean skin teams of the league. Yeah, so that's a, uh, the, an etiquette uh, trainer. The West Tigers have called in an, an etiquette trainer, bizarrely enough, because as I said, they're one of the teams without scandal. Mm. You know, like, like an etiquette trainer for the Newcastle Knights would be, always take the pill nearest you. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, also if you're, you know, in uh, Cronulla Sharks and you're, you're in a hotel room, you, you know, you turn to your captain and go, age before beauty. <laughs> Eastern suburbs, hmm? it's always take a dump in the toilet. <laughs> That's a great set of skills. Isn't it? <laughs> so interestingly, rugby league players that attend etiquette training seminars end up uh, playing soccer. <laughs> 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 but it's, there was one. There was one thing when they had the etiquette said, orders for a lady at dinner. I would get my bollocks handed to me if I <laughs> if I presumed to order for a lady at dinner. It's, you're having the steak. No. <laughs> no, I'm not. Oh. But... <laughs> you can't. I do, am I wrong? Do you expect a man to order for you at dinner? I would love Are a rugby league player. Jeff, then? I was talking to Jeff. Oh, sorry, <laughs> the standard order for a league player is, um, I'll have the steak and the beer and she'll have the row hypnol. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh, they have it, by the way. <laughs> Ten points, then the early lead of tweet. Some of Australian Rugby League's top players have taken a course in etiquette to ensure their behaviour in public is polite. The course was conducted by manners specialist Anna Musson, who, just for an hour, got to feel like Diane Fossey with the gorillas. <laughs> uh, another expert said, a player's first drink should always be a clear liquid. Practice saying, may I have a sparkling mineral water? <laughs> then use it to wipe the sauce off your shirt and get a beer. <laughs> The big lesson could be how to treat a lady. For example, compliment her on how she looks. Always tell a lady both her tits look great. <laughs> and also, they're lovely. They're both lovely, darling. 
One also informs her beforehand if one is intending on sharing her with several other chaps back at one's hotel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, saucy, saucy. At the end of the night, a gentleman never wipes his dick on the curtains. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I can't believe it. He, he, he comes out here with, let's keep it clean, yeah. let's keep yeah. it nice. He's using you, Smarry. He finishes it up with that. <laughs> I was hoping the children were out of the room at that point. <laughs> really? what, what, when you wiped your dick on the curtain? <laughs> Oh, I must be honest, sometimes I am even ashamed of myself. Claire, <laughs> Claire, Jeff, Celia, fire up. Okay. Martin um, Ferguson. Martin Ferguson. Oh, what's smart. that? Water. Aquarius. Um, oh, hello. Oh, Muckety. Oh, Muckety. Darwin, uh, Northern Territories. Muckety's the... Um, um, Muckety. Muckety's Muckety the station, isn't it? The, Muckety the, station. Where nuclear waste is meant to go or something? Uh, yes. It's, it's actually but... meant to go there. You're right. It's right. meant to go there. <laughs> uh, it was written in the scriptures that it should go there. Um, <laughs> This is the, the, uh, the, the elders of the Mukti station, because it's yes. not called Cleanity, is it? It's called <laughs> Mukti. So it's meant to be a bit of a mess, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Um, and they're gonna... It's like calling something a killer whale and expecting it to cuddle you, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you want to be nice though if we had a cuddle whale? Uh, <laughs> that's what I call you. <laughs> so about the, um, the, the nuclear this... waste, that apparently has been kept somewhere else and is, is coming back, which I, I think is... Yeah. Can you just hang on to this for a while? What is it? Don't worry. Just, just put it... <laughs> It'll keep you back. warm at night. Yeah, but they're, they're, I think it's planning to go to this... to Makati's... Yeah. You've got some nuclear waste. And as a British person, dumping nuclear waste in Australia, I know quite a bit about this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and it's, it's got, well, it's got to go somewhere. And, and so these elders have, have, have accepted some money and the, the, uh, the people surrounding the district are a little bit concerned. I don't know what they're concerned about. I think maybe the plants are going to absorb this radioactive waste. The kangaroos are going to eat it. They're going to become fluorescent. Probably stop them being hit by cars uh, if they are fluorescent. Um, the kangaroos are the corn. They go nuts. Is it? Evil kangaroos. Oh. But I, I, I thought that it was, they will. My idea. Yeah, true. Yeah. Don't, don't go. I think you, you have this one in the no, bag. No, no, no. It's, it's, no, I'm it's just going to give you another 20 points because they're taking so long. Thank you, Paul. No, 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 seriously. seriously. Oh, oh. Um, I think they, they said, because they, they said that Indigenous councils can volunteer land to accept the nuclear waste. You know, like they volunteered land when the settlers got here. You know, <laughs> it's like that kind of, would you like to take Thank you for that this? one round of applause. Oh, thank you. Obviously, see, someone's still with the conscience in the audience. Lovely. Now, how about kill two birds with one stone, pay for Pauline Hanson to go on a surfing holiday to Bali, slip it in a boogie board? <laughs> I think also, also, it was a policy of the previous government, the Liberal government, uh, who, did the, who did the findings on Muckley Station. Are you just giving them the answer? Mm. Well, they're hopeless by themselves. <laughs> I think that's very wise. <laughs> okay, I'm going I'm to give you eight for that and end the horror. <laughs> oh. The Rudd government is moving ahead with plans to build Australia's first nuclear waste dump on Aboriginal land in the Northern Territory. Sorry. <laughs> works, doesn't it? Uh, the government did have a great plan about where they could hide small amounts of the waste all over the country, but Peter Garrett ruined that. <laughs> Aboriginal people have lived here for 40,000 years. Now they'll have something to treasure for 40,000 more. <laughs> Labor was against the plan in opposition, but since being in power, they've done nothing to stop it. So technically, they're not doing anything wrong. They're just not doing anything. It's like if someone, <laughs> it's like if someone is running for lift and you don't press the button. Technically, you haven't done anything. So technically, you're not an evil son of a bitch. <laughs> Resources Minister Martin Ferguson says, we can't wait any longer to find a site because our nuclear waste is coming back after being processed overseas. If only the government had some experience with stuff they don't want arriving on boats. <laughs> yeah, oh, take that. So after one isotopic round of Good News Week, the Robins team are on 40 points. Oh, right. The Hooper team are on 8 points. Coming up, Warren.
During the break, as Brendan Favola surprised us in the shower... <laughs> I <don't... laughs> uh, both teams were given three clues to a recent strange but true story. Robins, Loeb and Bernagot. <laughs> Come on, pretty, pretty. Come on. Come on, pretty, pretty. <laughs> Tony Abbott's Mardi Gras costume last Saturday. <laughs> I recognise it. Actually, it's, it's funny you should say that, because it does smell like Barnaby Joyce's ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very low-rent Tim Burton film. Isn't it? <laughs> what am I supposed to be? You are meant to be a cat. You oh, are right. Meant to be a cat. <laughs> okay, I'm a cat. It, yeah. it looks like uh. Andrew Lloyd Webber's recession version of cats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just call me Rum Tum Tugger. <laughs> Wow. Can't take this thing off. It's actually molting in my face. Yeah, take, if you wanted to, go on, take it off. Yeah. You, look, you look ridiculous. You're bringing down the tone again. Look, it actually says... I reckon you should visit old people's homes with that on and let them... <laughs> yeah, walk with an organ. Hey, guess what? I'm deaf. <laughs> <laughs> tall guy with a black robe couldn't make it today. Come with me. <laughs> and we also have a flash... No! <laughs> Flash. <laughs> hey, Paul. Oh, no. oh. <laughs> hey, now you've got red eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have this. Pictures of you, pictures of me, hung up on the wall for the world to see. Pictures of you, pictures. to be confess to me every secret moment every stolen promise you believe confess to me all that lies between us all that lies between you and me <laughs> pictures of you pictures of me now that's not And Hooper, Green and Paula have a furry friend. Now oh. this Ooh. is Barnaby Joyce's Mardi Gras costume. <laughs> <laughs> so you can, you just have to... Bush really? All right. Uh. <laughs> I thought my head would go deeper, but... Uh, <laughs> how often <laughs> I say that? Uh, we also have a projector. Wake up, wake up. Okay, this is Rosebud. Oh, um, that's me, that's, that's the hotel. Um, um, that's where I met that guy, <laughs> and that should be in there. That is. That I was young, and I needed the money. That is. <laughs> and we also have this. Eat your heart out, Jaffy. <laughs> You'll never top this. <laughs> We're all going on a summer holiday. No more working for the week or two. Fun and laughter on a summer holiday. No more worries for me and you For a week or two We're going where the sun shines brightly Not England, then We're going where the sea is blue We've seen it in the movies Now let's see if it's true oh. Hi, dear, hi you know, the, the amazing thing with that was, I, I actually heard Cliff Richard roll in his grave and he's only half dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Made the old people have it. They started clapping straight away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the beauty is, when you're that, when you're that old, you, you, you clap with that bit first and that bit a second later. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back to those conundrums a little later. Now to the game called... Warren! <laughs> Three headlines about the same subject, but their identity has been definitely concealed by the name... Warren! Jackie, you have Warren's gut kick, Warren guns for Obama, Niall looks to Warren potential. Okay. Who is that Warren? All right, I'm thinking that it's um, Belinda Neal because there was a discrepancy over her luncheon bill at Iguana Joe's last weekend, so I'm thinking maybe that's that one, or she may have kicked gut because one of her 
the soccer team she was coaching missed a scoring opportunity there, stupid little seven-year-olds. Um, <laughs> Uh, but then again, Niall looks to Belinda Neal, no, Niall looks to George Michael potential perhaps, or potential. I'm thinking it might actually be Sarah Palin. How did I work that out? How did out? you work that out? Because Niall is looking to boost the Christian Democrat Party. He wants someone to spruik for them, so he's got the Sarah Palin in. They've got so much in common. He's um, anti-abortion, so she, she's actually a bit more progressive than him because she's anti-abortion but pro-gun. So she doesn't actually believe in killing babies until after they're born. And um, <laughs> then you've got Fred Niall, who's also anti-abortion, which I think is ironic because if male politicians could fall pregnant, they'd be the abortion express aisles at Coles. <laughs> the Sarah Palin gut kick. That was the, um, the gag they did at expense of her daughter on Family Guy. Oh, yeah. I missed that one. That was that. Yeah, yeah, you're on the right track. We don't have Foxtel, sorry, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> So Sarah Palin, we happy to. Uh, Sarah Palin get the guns right. for Obama, and of course she's going to hate Obama. So yeah, I, I think I, I think it would be Sarah Palin. I reckon Jack's right. Let's have a look and see if Jackie is right. Ah! Yeah. If we, if we have, an, uh, have another look at it in, in a rather creepy way, it, it could have been Michael Palin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why Michael Palin want to kill Obama, but... But I am actually uh, Fred Nile's love child. I am. My, no, my real name is D. D. Nile. So there you go. Uh, it is Sarah Palin. Jackie was right. Legendary New South Wales god botherer Fred Nile is trying to bring out the moose shoot and fun rot and election lose and cliche mangling harpy to spruik for his Christian Democratic Party. <laughs> Palin is keen to visit Australia. There are so many unique native animals she's dying to see. Kill, stuff and mount on her cabin wall. <laughs> she's especially keen to bag one of our freaky looking bouncy mooses. <laughs> But is this a good idea? I'm no expert, but I'm pretty sure there's something in the Bible about Satan taking the guise of a four-eyed, gun-toting milf. <laughs> <laughs> Celia, your Warren yes. looks a little like this. Okay. Warren chills out. Mm -hmm. Warren wobbles. <laughs> Warren closes eyes, wishes critics away. Who is that uh, Warren? Uh, well, first of all, Warren Wobbles is an excellent newsreader name. <laughs> you know, and it's the biggest one I've ever seen. Warren Wobbles, 10 years. <laughs> so if we could... <laughs> can um, I just, yeah? You, can I just say, it almost looks like it could be the biggest loser. <laughs> <laughs> and with Wobbles, it's usually, I think it's a, a using a wobbles. voice thing. They go wobbles. voice and, and or critics. Drunk. Or drunk. Or that. Or that. <laughs> Um, okay, so that narrows it down to a drunk, fat singer. Um, <laughs> but there's two people, two people come to mind who are in town who are singers, and one is George Michael, who I don't trust because he's got two first names. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only reason you don't trust him? Yeah, George. <laughs> Celia, I don't know yeah. if you know this, but obviously the well-known homosexual George Michael, that's not his real name. He's actually Greek. His real name is Giorgio Sokokokolo. <laughs> Now I trust him. Excellent. <laughs> uh, and the other one is is Whitney Whitney Houston, and I think oh, yeah. that she oh. has been copping a shellacking from the press about her rubbish, her yeah. singing being yeah, it bad. Yeah, was meant to be pretty appalling. In a, yeah. In a concert, but at least she's singing. Come on, you know. What, what, what would you what, prefer? As opposed to doing crystal <laughs> meth and stabbing people. <laughs> yeah. Because she's known for, for the drug business and now not, <laughs> not doing the drug business and rubbish concerts, so it has to be said, a bit selfish. Get back on the gear, give us a good show. <laughs> Winnie, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't. Whitney what, what drug was she always accused of taking? I, she was, I think, think she's rumoured to have done a lot of crack. I don't know if she's actually come out and said she... Because uh, I was... My doctor... I went to my doctor because I had a, a, a chemical burn on my eye. Don't ask. And, um, <laughs> and uh, gardening, genuinely. And they said, uh, statistically, gardening is more dangerous than crack cocaine. And I'm, I'm surely not. Where's all the posters? Gardening, just say no. <laughs> You just not where's, the old, where's the old people going around schools going, well, I just started doing it with friends, didn't I? You know. <laughs> a few, a few carrot tops in a saucer. <laughs> uh. I, don't, I, don't, I don't 
How did you suppose a snort trowels? I can see how that would no. be dangerous. Like a little tiny shoulder. That would, that would do some damage. But in Whitney's defence, I'm a big Whitney fan and I went to see three of her concerts and yes, admittedly, she did forget some of the lyrics to her songs, but they're hard lyrics to remember. Cos I'm saving all my love. Yes, I'm saving all my love. Yes, I'm saving all my... <laughs> That's difficult. That's you a also, she did some beautiful bronchial interpretations of her songs too. Beautiful. And beautiful. Look, can I just can I just say because I saw her. She got a she got a one star review. That's what I saw the one star review. That's more than what I got in Edinburgh. That's pretty yeah. good. Did you get one star. Yeah. I've seen what people do with that. Is the following year they say on their poster a star the Scotsman. Uh, <laughs> I hate reviews. Who doesn't hate reviews as comedians? Because they always spoil perfectly good reviews with little words like not and far from. <laughs> <laughs> and, and however and but. Yes, and <laughs> under no circumstances. <laughs> uh, shall we see if Warren is Whitney? Yay! Yes! <laughs> Whitney has now left our shores, but not before her tour went the way of her stash when she heard the police were at the door. <laughs> While she couldn't hit the high notes like the old days, promoter Andrew McManus defended Whitney's performance, saying she was having a red-hot crack. <laughs> Smoking. The irony is it was having too much red-hot crack that destroyed her voice in the first place. The vitriol from fans was remarkably harsh. One claimed she couldn't entertain a dead rat. <laughs> but it's not Houston's fault. No one told her the tour had started. <laughs> Leaving the park behind can't be easy for Whitney. Every time she sings a ballad, thousands of fans hold up lighters. <laughs> Whitney... Whitney has no idea what people are complaining about. She's never felt more relaxed since she started seeing Michael Jackson's doctor. <laughs> uh, over there now, 55 points. Over there, 23 points. After the break, so you think you can mine. It's time for a mine. Jeff Green. <laughs> Come on, Jeff, and grab a mine. Um. Oh, here we go. We'd yeah. love to have you on the show. Oh, thanks oh, thanks for having me. It's, oh, it's been a pleasure. Gorgeous. Um, right, so... Oh, my goodness. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, my, my God. Easy. OK. Yeah. All right. And you've know, got a good team there. I have... Well, you need to line them a little bit. Fantastic. You yeah. can always come back to the desk if you forget a few words. Ladies. Good luck, ladies. Uh, strap yourselves in. Uh, That's all I'll say. I'll do my best. Do your best. I'll do my best. What could, what could people expect? <laughs> and your time starts now. Ooh, um. Oh, uh, uh, a play. A play. Um, yes, um, so. Um, a theatre thing. Oh, um, indecision? I... Yes. Oh. Um. I am not familiar with that, Jeff Green. Good sex. <laughs> or a puppet. Oh, what? All right. Yeah. Puppet. Yes, yes. Like he's a married... married hey, 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 Thunderbirds are go! <laughs> uh, um... Yeah. Or I mean, using good these. Having enjoy it. Good happy yeah. enjoying things. Yeah, um, good uh, sex with a puppet. <laughs> Get lost! I don't... You don't want to have sex with the puppet. No. <laughs> I want to know, are you the puppet all the time? Or are you um, being someone who can't the puppet? I don't know what I am, actually. <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, so, there's a lady. Yeah. Is that a lady? Um, um, lady. I'm struggling here. <laughs> uh, you're, doing, you're doing really well. <laughs> doing very, very is it, well. Is it April the 1st already? <laughs> um, right. Uh, we got this, we got this. We got this. We've right almost now. got so the first a word. So it is a thunderbird. Uh, um, right. Are you talking about consensual versus non-consensual sex? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> I'm talking about I'm talking about About a theatre show. A play. A play. Yeah, a, a play. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez, you're a chatty oh. mime, aren't you? I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, why I always go for Scrabble at those dinner parties. <laughs> it's a sex play. Sexy it, play. Sexy play. Oh, is it like a... Sexy play with lots of obscenity in it, let's oh, okay. assume. Okay, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> Help me out. Thank you. <laughs> Let's just assume it's a, it's a right. play of some kind with a bit of obscenity and maybe a bit of... Uh, Sex and swearing. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yep. And Which some is, babes. And yep. that's all. That's all. Let's go. Right. We're fine. Porn on ice. Uh, and it's coming soon to Channel 10. <laughs> Is it porn on ice? Because that would be hilarious. All right, and that's, now that's a picture? It's a picture, yeah. yes, yes, a picture. it is a picture. Stop doing Oxen that! Boobs. Oh, boobs. <laughs> it's and a then... titty picture. It's, yeah. a it's a picture Cleavage. of a Cleavage. Cleavage, that's a lovely word. That's a good word. Use that word again. <laughs> I have heard of this. Oh, thing. but you're not allowed cleavage. In the picture. In the picture. Yes. Oh, it's... Yes. <laughs> You're I think that's it, don't I think you? That, ladies and gentlemen, the marvellous <laughs> Jeff Reed. No! Yes. Uh, oh, I'm, so, so I'm sorry. Oh, no. yeah, yes, I'm sorry. I'm Peter. sorry. I have absolutely no idea what he got. Can I, can I guess? We'll go to Claire at this point. You're right, but I'm not going to give them any points oh, okay. for it. <laughs> I know I lied to him. OK. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just to keep it moving somewhat. So, is it, is it that there is a puppet show, a stage puppet show with sex and swearing, oh, but in um, the picture you're not allowed, they weren't allowed to put cleavage on the picture to advertise it? Can you tell us? I can't tell you that. Can you tell us which country it was in? The country? Yeah, the country. America! Thank you. <laughs> So we're talking consensual puppetry. <laughs> uh, if you're a bit confused, I know this team is. Yes. In the US city of Colorado Springs, an advertising agency has refused to put up posters for a production of the Broadway show Avenue Q because they feature puppet cleavage. <laughs> There's the cleavage of which we speak. <laughs> it does look like a puppet bum at this point, doesn't it? <laughs> There's, in fact, puppet cleavage. Wait till they find out where the puppeteers put their hands. <laughs> Colorado Springs is home to several Christian groups who don't want imaginary characters perverting people's minds with made-up filth. That's what the Bible's for. <laughs> <laughs> but, Lamar... <laughs> but Lamar Advertising says it's not that they find the voluptuous breasts objectionable, but because they present an unachievable body image for puppets. <laughs> The poster in question had no problem being displayed in Australia because we're mature. Plus, puppet boobs, come on, people! <laughs> Humphrey hasn't worn pants for years. <laughs> Who will be next to show off their extraordinary mind skills? Find out right after this. Robin's team, who will be your mime champion? Mike, are you going to come and do this one? Come on. Well, actually, Pete, you No, no, I have a moral objection to mime. I'm not going anywhere near. I refuse to be seen miming or in the vicinity of mimes. <laughs> this one, this one's quite easy. Jackie, uh, up for oh, mime? I don't like pretending to have things that I don't really have. <laughs> you're, so, you're so far in front at the moment, I think you could choose anyone to do the mime. In a... Anyone? You... Yeah. Do you got any suggestions? If you don't choose, How I'll choose for you. Well, who have you got, monkey boy? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Tokyo Shock Boys. <laughs> Special guest mine. Konnichiwa. 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 Do you want to see the mime? Come on. Come on. <laughs> I got the feeling this could take a while, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, here's the. What do you think? We'll have a look at that mime. Ah, yeah. Okay, so that's all you have to do. Hey, Paul! <laughs> yes! We don't speak English! Okay, well, let's go over here. Let's go. I'm going to wander over here. Come down here. Yeah. We'll sort this out. We'll sort this out. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Okay. Uh, you, you speak a little yeah, bit of English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. What we're trying to do is a mime. You mime this for this team over here, okay? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> to win them points. Yeah. So. Uh, Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very yeah, simple. Yes. And just if we can try and get every word there, that'd be good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Clearly this one. No, we don't. Quack, quack. Oh, duck. There's a duck in there. <laughs> Are we good? Are we happy? No, no, yeah, no, yeah. No, no. Okay, we'll put that back in there. If yeah. you need to look at that at any point, yeah. it'll just be on my desk. Yes. Yeah. Though it won't matter because you can't read English. <laughs> Okay, we're ready, fellas. Yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, here we go. Uh, Tokyo Shock Boys. Yeah. Your time starts now. Yes. Michael Jackson, Back from the Dead? No. <laughs> Dancing, movement, dancing, Bollywood? Dancing. Oh, yes, yeah, on the right India, line. Yes, India, 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 India. India, India, India. 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 Thank you very much. <laughs> India. <laughs> Indian marriage. Indian. Indian. Uh, uh, Indian. Uh, uh, wedding ceremony. Uh, uh, it's a wedding. Oh, there's been oh, an Indian wedding. Oh, this is good. Wait, wait. A voluptuous lady, beautiful lady, beautiful lady, lady. a beautiful lady with uh... a beautiful lady with uh, penis. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Whatever you do in India stays in India. <laughs> oh, a beautiful lady married a, married an elephant. Married an elephant? No. <laughs> married a, married a magical elephant, a dragon. <laughs> Jesus, creepers, that's got to hurt. Oh, dear no, God. This is going right. 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 Okay. Right. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, no. I don't like where this is going. <laughs> right. 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 They, they, they had to... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Do it! <laughs> this is so like my wedding, it's not funny. <laughs> is it a new episode of The Iron Chef? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. OK, so far we've got beautiful lady elephant wedding and I think the elephant got muted. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> The elephant was... Help! <laughs> I'm not exactly sure where you're up to. <laughs> so, elephant wedding India. Massive damage. Massive damage every... What's happened to your teeth? <laughs> uh, so, we're about, we're about here, are we? I'm crushing the 20 limousines. Crushing, 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 crushing 20 limousines. Oh, right! So, so, okay. so, so... Yeah, yeah. Those, OK, no, wait. Yeah, OK. OK, just, okay. we can just... Okay. Get, 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 get. Oh, hang on! No, no. Oh, oh, oh. oh there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right. That's a very, very oh. large car. Not a large car, no. a limo limousine. A limousine. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, is it one of those ones where the, the, the bride and the groom were on? Were they near the elephant? On the elephant? Uh, <laughs> oh god. Is this a release of the. Ah! 
<laughs> well, was there a wedding in yeah. India, yes. obviously, where an elephant, yes. it's often our elephants in Indian weddings, um, it went berserk, did it, mate? Yes, and yes. And it crushed some yes, cars. Yes, 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 yes. Limousines? Yes, yes, yes. yes. And now... And now what? And now... <laughs> but it could also be Naomi Campbell tries to resolve things with a driver. <laughs> Uh, You've got it all, just one, one little bit. <laughs> yeah, elephant. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> What's the elephant trying, trying to do? Trying to mount the limousine. Yes, thank you very much. Good enough. <laughs> we have a show. Sidonie Pass Marvel. Please check our website, tokyoshockboy.com.au. Please. Hi. <laughs> Tokyo Shockboy. Thank you. I just want to mention the Tokyo Shock Boys are touring nationally, uh, starting in Sydney this week. Wow. So get along to see them. Don't wear your good clothes. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the Robins is now on an almost unassailable 155 points. The Hoopers on a well-earned, and they did it all by themselves, 31 <laughs> points. Up next, Hot Spot. This is Hotspot, where we separate the sheep from the goats, the men from the boys, and the killer whales from the pool toys. Robin's team, are you ready? Yes, we are. OK, instead of apologising, what should Kevin Rudd do to show he's truly sorry? He should... He should... Oh, it's <laughs> He should act as a mentor to other politicians and, you know, show them how to say sorry, like Belinda Neal. <laughs> sorry! <laughs> sorry! All I'd like, I'd just like to say that I think it's very important that Kevin Rudd, as a man, apologises because uh, women like men to apologise because they like you to be sorry, preferably your whole life, in my opinion. <laughs> and, in fact, I've got into the habit of saying sorry to my wife first thing in the morning in case I did something wrong in one of her dreams. <laughs> Whether somebody should say sorry or do something else, I think usually, like what they're meant to do is, like wear nothing except a little French maid's apron and a <laughs> dust out, and do whatever the other guys say for a whole day. <laughs> we do not want to see that, Kevin. <laughs> I'm with Claire on this one. Julia. <laughs> what should the Liberal Party be sorry for? <laughs> Two and a half men. <laughs> yeah, someone, someone has to be. I don't care who it is. Someone be sorry for that. Actually, actually, can we point out, it's now actually two and a three quarter men. Yeah, that's he's, not, he's not cute anymore. He's sort of fat and creepy and you know he's masturbating a lot. <laughs> Um, what's the best thing about being 74? You know what I reckon the best thing about 74 is? Is you can be like old person honest. You don't have to care anymore. So when people... You're fat and stupid. <laughs> and you, you can't argue with it. You're clearly, you're fat and stupid. <laughs> oh, oh, I can't wait. <laughs> you can wear slippers to the shops. <laughs> This kid's not mine. I'm 74. I can smack whoever's kid I like. The best thing about being 74 is losing chat-up lines like, did you break a hip when you fell from heaven? <laughs> Having plenty of time for a little think about life while you're at the ATM. <laughs> Pants up to here. <laughs> I mean, like, seriously. You want to change? Just there. 
<laughs> and then, you, don't, you don't have to make tough decisions like, should I go for a walk or go to the toilet? <laughs> Why not do both? <laughs> and as I witnessed this morning, you get to try and pay for your Woolworths groceries with your Medicare card. <laughs> Um, using chat up lines like, are you a natural blue? <laughs> what message would you leave on God's answering machine? Oh, uh, what uh, message? Um, hi, God. Look, this is this is a bit awkward. Um, the other night, I wasn't actually talking to you. Um, <laughs> I can see. Look, I'm sorry for the. I. Uh, uh, look, just uh, uh, call me back later when you exist. <laughs> milk. Don't forget we need milk. <laughs> do you have another thing? Your message isn't long enough. <laughs> and I've got another thing to say to you. Uh, beep, beep. Do, 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 do. Oh, I don't know, so when I was five, you know what? Yeah, no, you, 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 your son's showing up again, yeah, yeah, with, with these 12 unemployed mates on the hooker. Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> what should Barack Obama do in Nimbin? Oh, Beautiful my Nimbin. Gosh. The first thing he's got to do, because I was in, Nim in Nimbin and the locals are fantastic, had this guy banging on my door every day, Jackie, do you want to buy some hash cookies? Jackie, want to buy some hash cookies? I'm like, sorry, but I don't do carbohydrates. <laughs> He's, re he's really got to make sure he turns up with the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, if he really wants to be popular, like if he wants them just to go, holy shit, this dude is awesome, he should bring nachos. <laughs> <laughs> they will... <laughs> Whatever he does decide to do, he should call Clinton for tips on how to roll it. <laughs> They shouldn't really invite Barack Obama. They should invite a uh, national or international celebrity that will appreciate the delights of Nimbin, somebody like Prince Harry. And, <laughs> and he could bring his dad, and if his dad can't make it, he could bring Prince Charles. <laughs> oh, oh. Where should we build our nuclear waste dump? Oh, God. <laughs> Nimbin. <laughs> Anywhere, and we'll put up a sign outside that says free superpowers. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Kevin Rudd could just get it, right? And then just walk the streets at night and just hope someone left a skip out. And just like, <laughs> <laughs> how cool would that be if you heard like bin fall over and you open the door, like Kevin Rudd, get out of my van. <laughs> <laughs> New Zealand. That's in Australia, isn't it? Just put it in New Zealand and then just pick it off a bit further and let it float away. How do you know a rugby league player has been to etiquette class? He's got his cock in his pants. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, we're done. Strange Bits 2 is next. Time to seal the strange but true deal, Mikey, Jackie, Peter. You had the cat. Ga 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 ga. You're the pussy cat doll that didn't get picked. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was the last pussy in the store. <laughs> uh, we also have the Flash. Oh yeah. <laughs> Flash. Oh. <laughs> God, do I... Oh. Oh, I, I love it. I'm taking. I'm wearing this home on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and finally, this. <laughs> this is the clock upon the wall. This is the story of us all. This is the first sound of a newborn child before she starts to crawl. 
This is a war that's never won This is a soldier and he's gone This is the mother waiting by the phone Praying for her son Bloody Telstra <laughs> Pictures of you got a CD for sale. Thank you. No, sit down. I can't. There's not time for another chorus. No. Oh, shameless. <laughs> shameless. Oh, I'm Jewish. Sorry. That's not for us. I'm Michael Jackson's cat. <laughs> Perhaps Hello Kitty's new men's range. <laughs> here, come here. <laughs> um, well, I, I, I think because of the, the fact that the... <laughs> hey, puss. <laughs> oh, man, you'd need some hell of a gap behind your fridge, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> because the cat's got a little, uh, little mask, a little bandit-style mask, I'm assuming this refers to a cat burglar. Oh. 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 And I... over to you. I thought perhaps it was in reference to Lara Bingle's naked pussy in the shower. I see, and this well, would be the flash photography. Yes. <laughs> All right, then. We could go with that. Yeah, we it's pretty good. good. You're so far in front, if you did, you would still win. Uh, where the bloody hell were you? In the shower, apparently. Um, uh, I'm assuming this is not just a flasher, this has got something to do with... Photography. Flash photography. And yes. Pictures. Yeah. So uh, a bloke who's who's a who's cat burglar. A cat burglar who is robbing people's places is taking flash photos of himself doing. And, and I would assume being so stupid, he might even then leave them on the camera. Yeah. For the owners of the house to find places that they're. Or flash. or even post them on YouTube. Or YouTube. Good, yeah, good, good, better. good, good. Yeah, he's, he's actually been taking shots of himself committing acts of crime, and post them on the net. And as uh, we're making this up, it'll be close. No, you're very, very close. Right. Yeah, yeah. Close uh, enough? A real cat has learned how to <laughs> use a camera. Hi, <laughs> oh, they're very close, ladies and gentlemen. Give them a round of applause. I'll explain it. Do you know which city he's from, Peter? Um, <laughs> it's, either, it's either somewhere here or somewhere overseas, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank well, you very much. Uh, for those of you who didn't quite understand it, police in Melbourne are hunting a burglar who steals mobile phones, uses the camera function to snap a particular part of his anatomy, then sends the pictures to everyone in the address book. Oh, that's fantastic. Wow. That actually Why not? That's yeah. great. I tell you what, I can't yeah. wait for the police lineup. <laughs> uh, St Kilda police are on the lookout for a bit of a dick. Oh, yeah. And have already arrested Eddie Maguire twice. <laughs> Ten. Uh, oh. You can't say that. I love it. Uh, ten years ago, this crime would have been impossible. The chemist would have at least raised an eyebrow when you ordered 100 prints of your cock. Uh, <laughs> officers are so desperate, they've hired a private dick. It's a classic case of good cock, bad cock. You don't want to see the bad cock. <laughs> Claire, Jeff, Celia, <clears throat> your clues were the furry friend. Hey. Oh. My furry friend. He's got a special new friend. Oh. I don't know why, I guess, because the props department bought two and didn't want to waste them, but I call them Mikey and Paul. <laughs> oh, we, we've told you, it's never going to happen. <laughs> this, this one threw his shit at me earlier. Actually, yeah, it must be my one, yeah, then. <laughs> That's why I never go in his dressing room. <laughs> uh, we also have a projector. Yep, look, I, I'm, I, I'm Gen Y, you see. So I quite like this, but I'm not sure where the status so, goes. That's the wrong, this. different show. Isn't it? It's a different show. Is it? <laughs> Lucky, that's the AV2000. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so... Uh, oh, that's the AV2000. Oh, wasn't it a good day at school when oh. teacher set that up? In 1978, that was the education revolution right there. <laughs> 
these from my childhood and I love that clickety click noise yeah. and it always, just that sound and you associate it with, maybe this next one would be interesting. <laughs> I used to love it. <laughs> We're just uh, fading into nostalgia here, should we keep moving? And finally, this. Uh, in lieu of talent, I'm going to go for shame shameless populist appeal. We're all going on a summer holiday. No more working for a week or two. It's fun and laughter on a summer holiday. No more worries for me and you. For a week or two. We're going where the sun shines brightly. We're going where the sea is blue. We've seen it in the movies. Now let's see if it's true So we're going on a summer holiday To make our dreams come true Jeff, Jeff, this is, this is just for you But suddenly I, I was transported to Butlins in the 70s yeah. <laughs> You've got to attack a song like that <laughs> With a pickaxe <laughs> But beautifully, beautifully delivered. It's, be it's, it's better when it's sung by a repressed homosexual. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why mine sounded so good? <laughs> uh, do we have a story? Uh, um, uh, I'm, I'm, I don't know what this story might be. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to fess up. I have no idea what I'm talking um, about. It did occur to me that it might be another one of those stories, like where, you know, they take the gnome and take photos of it around and send the photos home, except it's of toys. <laughs> we, we, we actually did that with Paul once. It was so much... <laughs> <laughs> what? What? You, you showed me that love earlier. Could it, could it just be the, um, could it be the teddy bear cameras that they're making for little kids to take? For, you know, it's like the digital oh. camera inside a teddy bear that they're making for little kiddies? It's, or doing no, that same no. thing? How about, how about? Thing, doing the gnome thing, but with, with toys. Yeah, yes, Sending yes. Sending the toys the, around yes, on it's holiday. The, it's the gnome thing with toys. Photos. Yes. It's the gnome thing with toys? Yes. So it is yep. like um, furry animals. Furry animals. That um, take photographs of themselves in various <laughs> international <laughs> locations. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think we've missed it. Another vital bit. No, I don't think they're someone taking photographs of them. Someone, someone else is taking photographs. Someone's taking people's toys yes. and taking photos. I blame those sticking bananas and pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> they're always chasing where, teddy bears. Where, where, does, where, does, where does Cliff Richard come in? Well, well, usually there's so many to... answers to that question. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, moments too late. <laughs> so there's many more Are people paying to do this? Sorry? Are people paying to do that? I believe they are. Do we know uh, somewhere which in city? Europe. Somewhere or, in yeah, Europe. which European um, country or, or city? Say Brussels. European country. Um, so, I don't want to say Brussels. Say Brussels. Say Brussels. Um, say Brussels. You say Brussels. 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 Um, Is it Brussels, Paul? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish to God it was. This would be over if it was. <laughs> anybody, anybody? Greece. Greece. Paris. Denmark, Almost. In Greece. France. Amsterdam. Sweden. Holland. Marseille. Berlin. Uh, Spain. <laughs> Czech Republic. Thank you very much. You okay. Czech Republic. <laughs> Czech Republic. Czech Republic. Uh, for, just, for just 90 euros, a travel agency in the Czech Republic will not only take your teddy and other stuffed toys on holiday to Prague, they'll send you pictures of them enjoying the sights. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> and that's a quality stuffed toy. That's from... <laughs> That's clearly from the old Soviet bloc, that toy. <laughs> that is a Chernobyl stuffed toy. Uh, and if you don't pay, they send back one of Teddy's arms, then an ear, then an eye. <laughs> until you cough up the dough. But you'll still, you'll still worry about them. There's nothing worse than when your bear comes home from holiday and the quality of its hugs seems strangely different. <laughs> still, everyone benefits from the tourist trade, the toys get to see Prague, the toy owners get to see their toys in Prague, the agent gets a commission, and the Czech Mafia gets a convenient way to smuggle drugs all over Europe. <laughs> Stay tuned, Cuddle Monkeys, Fast Money is next. Here we go, Lara Bingle's favourite game, Woman's Day's Fast Money Box in Philadelphia. Yes. A man and woman grabbed some gems worth $110,000 from a jewellery store and ran off. What did they leave behind? <laughs> they left their child behind. Thank you very much. <laughs> the irony of the situation is they would have got more for the baby on eBay than the stolen gems, particularly if it's one of those rare black ones that Madonna's after. <laughs> Thank you.
No one's ever stopped me before in Fast Money. And that, 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 <laughs> oh, in the UK, a stud bull called Boris has been saved from the abattoir after a farmer helped it to gain its libido. What did the farmer do? Uh, stud bull, we gained its libido. Oh, Viagra. he's on fire. Viagra. 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 Yeah. Viagra. Yes, well, thank you. Oh, I thought it was cow porn. <laughs> he gave it Viagra, herbal Viagra, not uh, real Pfizer Viagra. Don't want to waste the good stuff on the animals, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Well, unless you... Anyway... Uh, There's a horny joke in there. I can't think of it right wow. now. Very interesting. Yes, OK. Uh, the American Family Association has called for the killer whale that drowned its trainer to be punished according to biblical teachings. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shove Jonah in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to feed a lot more than 5,000 people, though, isn't it? What, 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 a what stoning? Is Thank you very much, a stoning. Oh. He's on fire. He's on fire, ladies and gentlemen. It's just going to go underwater. <laughs> maybe, no, no. maybe you could skim them. You'd have to skim them. <laughs> See, all you need is one good one to get in the blowhole and it's gone. <laughs> OK, this last one I'm going to throw open. Anyone can get this. Uh, in Germany, a man is facing charges of trespass after going to great lengths to spend some quality time with his girlfriend. What exactly did he do? I'm afraid I don't know this one. Or do you no, know no, 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 go. This is great. She was doing some time, so I actually <laughs> broke into prison to see her. <laughs> So in the naughty corner tonight, Mikey Robbins, Jackie Loeb and Peter Berner scored a punishing 235 points. <laughs> Spanking Claire Hooper, Jeff Green and Celia Pacola on 56. <laughs> Ten.com.au slash GNW is the place to get the podcast. See more or donate to the Nimbin Tim Tam Relief Appeal. <laughs> <laughs> so we say crack on, Whitney, and leave you with the good news for the week ahead. Indonesian President Yudhiono will pop in for a visit, or as he likes to call it, a property inspection. <laughs> it's Celiac Awareness Week. Celiac Awareness Week. A disease in which the mucosa of the small bowel is damaged and the tiny finger-like projections which line it become inflamed and flattened often causing nausea, vomiting and chronic diarrhoea. <laughs> well, now you're all aware. <laughs> In Abu Dhabi, the Laureus World Sports Awards will be thrown into chaos when the Israeli team turns up with some really interesting passports. <laughs> oh, by the way, during Celiac Awareness Week, please don't eat wheat and be incredibly annoying making sure everyone knows about it. <laughs> oh, I, don't do, I won't eat wheat. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> oh, no wheat for me. I can't eat wheat. Because <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm a celiac. Oh, oh. I won't have wheat. What's even Get worse? Away from it. <laughs> I can't have it in the same room. <laughs> What's even worse is lactose intolerant. Oh. I can't stand you, milk. <laughs> Uh, Cindy will host the free dog grooming show and expo, Bark in the Park, followed by the late night classical concert, Bark in the Dark, and a surprise <laughs> appearance by a great white. Fuck, it's a shark. <laughs> Cindy. Oh! 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 Can it get any better? That's the level! Can it get That's any better, level. ladies and gentlemen? Go no further! Can we go for gold? Sydney will host the Choice Awards, and Beijing will host the You'll Take It and Like It Awards. <laughs> Celiac Awareness Week. We get it, you can't eat bread! <laughs> and in Colorado, Charlie Sheen will face court if jailed cellmates have promised to give him the full two and a half minute experience. <laughs>